Hi, so today uh, we'll have a small uh, tutorial on uh, SLA. It is uh, in continuation with whatever we discussed on uh, SLA. Uh, so, so SLA as we understand stands for service level agreement, and uh, it is uh, important for any uh, cloud service provider and cloud service uh, consumer to have an agreement uh, to execute this uh, either consume or provide this service. This uh, as, as we understand that when we are using cloud computing we are basically leveraging on a third party services which are the service providers and your the consumer things are hosted. So, it is both way to we should sign up or we should have a SLA. So, uh, unfortunately there is as such uh, there is no standard or there is uh, rather I should I should say the standard is still evolving to have a standard S SLA across the uh, different services that one of the major uh, reason may be there are different type of services which are provided by different uh, providers. There are different category of consumer we, who require services at different uh, scale. So, nevertheless there are some broad uh, guideline by which these SLAs are governed. So, whenever you take a uh, service uh, from any service provider let it be commercial uh, any of the commercial cloud like say Microsoft Azure or uh, Google cloud or IBM cloud or uh, Amazon cloud or any cloud. So, you need to uh, agree on some of the uh, some agreement. So, what we have seen in our XLA talk that how these agreements are uh, means how this agreement can be formed or what will be the basic uh, um, uh, underlining infrastructure for that. So, for that matter we have talked about SLO uh, KPIs and so and so forth which which allows us to build up this SLA. So, in some cases is some of the metrics which will be there in some cases it is policy driven right like where your data should reside what should be the backup policy and so and so forth are more policy driven whereas, some of the agreements are uh, more on uh, parameter based like what is the C uptime or CPU uses or disk uses these are some of the things which are metric. So, what we will do we will we'll try to uh, look at one or two problem before that uh, we will see that uh, how uh, different parameters are considered in, in different type of uh, SLS right. Um, in different type of uh, uh, commercial like we have taken these uh, from again from uh, internet resources primarily uh, uh, from uh, commercial providers like Azure, IBM, Google and uh, Amazon and others. So, it is the idea is to say that what how they frame their things in a in a way. So, before uh, looking at those things uh, those uh, stuff we just see uh, as we have uh, as we have discussed earlier this uh, slide like it is a formal agreement between or contract between the provider and consumer foundation of consumer trust on provider and sometimes vis a vis that how the providers uh, wants to have this consumer on the things purpose to define a formal basis uh, for performance and availability of. Uh, service providing provider guarantees to deliver and uh, as we have talked about SLOs like objectively measurable condition for services and SLA SLO basic for the selection of cloud provider. This we have seen just I have kept the one slide so that things will be there. So, we will discuss this two problem and uh, then uh, try to look at uh, some of the aspects of uh, how uh, some uh, how this commercial cloud and other things they look at uh, the how they define. So, like a, a, a let us have a simple problem like suppose a cloud guarantee service availability of 99 percent of uptime right. Uh, let a third party application runs in the cloud for 12 hours a day at the end of one month it was found that there is a outage of 10.75 hours find out whether the provider has violated the initial availability guarantee right. So, very straightforward. So, it uh, gives in the SLA as 99 percent of time let uh, third party runs a cloud for 12 hours a day end of a month it is 10.75 
and uh, uh, to want to find out whether the provider has violated the initial availability guarantee. Right. So, if we look at uh, so uh, this problem, so the total time for which the application to run in a month is equal to 12 cross 30 360 hours right. Now, what we say outage time is 10.75 hours this has been declared this has been given. So, uh, therefore, uh, service duration equal to 360 minus 10.75 hours. So, percentage availability equal to 1 minus 10 point 75 by 349.25 into 100 which is 96.92 right. So, this much percentage availability will be there this you can uh, you can straight forward calculate. So, what it has it was there initial service guarantee was 99 percent. So, has, hence uh, as final service guarantee. So, final service availability is less than initial service guarantee. So, what we can conclude that the service cloud service provider CSP if we say has violated the SLA. Okay. So, it is a very straightforward uh, simple arithmetic, right? but what we see that uh, if we can somehow measure this type of things I can I can as far as the availability is concerned we can basically calculate whether the SLA violations are there. If there is a set of SLAs which need to be looked into for every thing every component we can have uh, this sort of uh, simple calculation and or in some cases it may be little complex when you want to do some statistical analysis to find out something and then you can say that this is whether the SLA violation is there or SLA has been uh, honored or not right. So, uh, this way uh, we can calculate uh, this uh, whether this any uh, SLA is satisfied or not right. Okay. So, this is this is pretty straightforward, but in reality it may not be that uh, straightforward I can have different type of availability at different point of time for that for that matter I can say that uh, say uh, if I consider a commercial uh, say for example, a banking organization. So, the SLAs I can say that m during my peak hours like I say 9 to 1700 hours I require a availability of 99.9 percent. Whereas, in off peak hours like 700 
to say I can divide them into different uh, scale, I can say that uh, 700 to um, 1700 to these hours, uh, I can have 99 percent, whereas 1900 to next day. Uh, 0, 0800 0, 0 hours, I can still bring down to say 97 percent and 0800 0, 0 to 0900 0, 0 hours, I can say it is something again 99 percent. Now, what I mean to say this availability requirement may also vary over time right based on your business requirements right. So, based on your requirement things will vary. like a institute like us I can I say that if my lab if our labs are running between 2 to 5 or say morning uh, in the morning session 2 to 6 or in the morning session 8 to 12. So, during those lab hours I require a high percentage of availability. However, during the off peak hours or uh, evening hours I may I do I may require much reduced things because more you guarantee the services more you pay for it right. So, that is required. So, there are there may be more complex calculation uh, to look at right. So, a similarly a we can uh, we look at another uh, problem uh, which is a little bit extension of the other uh, of the previous one. So, we consider a scenario where a company X a, a service provider X a, or sorry a comp uh, company X want to use cloud service from a provider P. So, there is a company X which wants to use a provider P like say IIT Kharagpur wants a cloud service from external world or any anything. The service level agreement guarantees negotiation negotiated between the two parties prior to initiating the business are as follows. So, before that the service level guarantees are like this like availability guarantee is 99.595 percent time over the service period. So, the service period it should be 99.95 percent time, availability period is 30 days, maximum service hour per day is 12 hours and cost uh, say 50 dollar a day right. So, this is this is the type of uh, agreement or type of requirement and uh, that uh, formal uh, requirement which has been agreed upon with for the within the service provider and the service provider. So, availability 99.95 percent uh, service period 30 days, maximum service hours per day is 12 hours and cost is 50 dollar a day right. So, service credits are awarded to the consumer if availability guarantees are not satisfied right. So, there is another uh, part like if you if the provider fails to provide uh, provide uh, fails to provide service at the guaranteed level for which uh, it has been agreed upon and the consumer is charging then uh, there they he has to pay the penalty right. So, penalty can be in time terms of uh, monetary terms or the penalty can be in terms of uh, so giving some extra uh, computer hour or data or whatever way it plays. So, in this case availability can be not said where monthly connectivity uptime service level are given as like if monthly uptime percentage is less than 99.95 percent, but more than 99 percent more greater than equal to 99 percent then the service credit is 10 percent right. Whereas, if it is less than 99 percent then the service credit should be uh, 25 percent right. However, in reality uh, it was found. Uh, that over the service period the cloud service suffered 5 outages right during uh, for this following durations like one is 5 hours 30 minutes, one is 1 hour 30 minutes, one is 15 minutes, 2 hours 25 minutes uh, each on uh, different day. So, this due to which normal service guarantees were violated right. If ILS, uh, if SLA negotiation are honored, uh, we need to compute the effective cost payable towards buying this cloud services, right? So this is this we need to uh, check that how much uh, effectively need uh, need to be paid by the consumer to for these cloud services, right? 
So, that is uh, fine. So, again just to quickly repeat, so there are some of the guarantees are there availability 99.95 percent service period 30 days maximum things 12 hours 20, 50 dollar and there are some penalty for not providing the services less than 99.95 percent, but greater than equal to 99 percent is 10 percent and less than 99 percent is 25 percent and there are 5 outages 5 hours 30 minutes 1 hour 30 minutes 15 minutes and 2 hour 25 minutes. And we need to find out that the effective cost. Uh, payable towards the buying the cloud services, right? So this we'd like to uh, work on. Again, not a difficult problem, but it gives us a idea the how things works. So service period duration is thirty days, right? Twelve hours. So total. So therefore, we have total so much hours or three six zero hours. cost what we have seen 50 US dollar per day. So, total cost so this is at the time of at the time of service negotiation is dollar 50 cross 30 or this fine. So, these are the facts what we have given 30 days service duration, duration per day is 12 hours as we are doing total service uptime is expected this one 50 dollar this. Uh, 50 dollar per day is the cost and total cost at the time of service negotiation is uh, 15 to 30, 50, 1500 uh, dollar that is the thing. Now, total service total service downtime is 5 hours plus 30 minutes plus 1 hour 30 minute plus 15 minute plus 2 hours 25 minute right. So, if you add up it is 9 hours 25 minutes ok. So, this is the total outage uh, time or the total down time uh, for the things right. So, we can we can say service availability equal to 1 minus this we have seen previously also and this is a standard thing 1 minus downtime by uptime equal to what we can say 1 uh, minus 9 hours 25 minutes by 3 6 0 hours hundred so much percentage. So, this fine. So, this was our uh, total expected out time and this is the outage or the downtime. So, 1 minus downtime by uptime and so and so forth and so what we have the 97.385 percent ok. So, this is uh, fine we calculate the service availability as 97.385 percent. So, um, as per this data available.
So, what we see monthly uptime percentage is 97385 as we have calculated which is less than 99 percent right not only 99.5 percent but less than 99 percent so service credit available due to that uh, whatever we um, whatever the during that service negotiation or SLA things were there 25 percent of total cost ok. So, it is total cost as we have calculated 1500. So, it is dollar 375. So, effective cost cost payable towards by buying the service equal to dollar 1500 minus dollar 375 equal to dollar 1125. So, this is the effective cost there. So, what we see that uh, based on the outage, so it is the if the if you look at the problem 2, it is the uh, extension of the uh, means a little bit extension of the first problem, but these are in reality things happens right. So, uh, we need to measure these things log these things and calculate uh, the things accordingly right. So, this is with respect to the uptime and there can be with respect to uh, means it may not be total down, but your uh, availability bandwidth may be means availability in the network may be slow and type of things. So, it, it depends on lot of other aspects so, it is it is not that uh, always the straightforward, but there are lot of other complex consideration in uh, doing so. So, what we tried in these two problem to show that that how a SLA guarantees can be calculated or looked into and type of uh, means how it can be. Uh, um, calculated and see that whether there is a violation of SLAs or not, right. So, uh, this uh, I believe this will give you a uh, broad uh, means a broad idea or a things of the things. So, uh, now what we will see that in uh, like what are the different uh, best practices or what are the different components uh, like one what we have calculated is the uptime. So, what are the other different components of the uh, of SLA which are considered by uh, primarily the co commercial cloud right. Uh, so, that uh, just a uh, couple of things we will see right. So, uh, so, SLA for cloud service provider already uh, we have uh, seen, uh, but uh, just to um, so some of the aspects uh, which uh, we would like to highlight this uh, like uh, in case of commercial cloud what uh, things that there is a applicable monthly period right which means for a calendar month in which the service credit is owed the number of days you are a subscriber of a service right so it is the applicable service period similarly applicable monthly service fees right so the concept of downtime like as we have seen services in the service specific terms below. Error code means the indication that the operation has failed such that HTTP status code is 5 x s or something right. So, that is services should have a error code because otherwise you will it is difficult to find uh, pinpoint that which services has failed and type of things. External connectivity is a bidirectional network uh, traffic support like protocol for HTTP or HTTPS. 
uh, can receive a public IP and so and so forth where the external connectivity incident means any single or a set of incident that result in downtime. Management portal means that the wave interface provided by uh, this is basically meant for Microsoft Azure. Uh, so, through which the consumer may manage the services like that a management portal service credit if there is a failure that how much credit will be given that we have seen in this problem. Service level means the performance metrics is set forth in the SLA uh, and uh, in case of Microsoft uh, Azure it agrees to meet the delivery of services. Service resource success code like as we have seen failure code we have a success code like in HTTP we know that 2xx is the success code. Support window refer to the period of time which during which the service feature or compatibility with the separate product services is supported. So, there is a support window where, where the things will be there. Along with that there are some additional definition like availability set refers to two or more virtual machine deployed, deployed across different fault domains. So, that uh, it will not go for uh, downtime at the same time uh, at the same uh, period to avoid single point of failure. Cloud services refers to the compute resources utilized for web and web role and worker role. Fault domain is a collection of servers that share common resources which are power and network connectivity. Tenant represent one or more roles uh, that is uh, one or more role instances that is deployed in the single package this we have seen like uh, it can be a worker role, it can be a web role type of thing. Update domain refers to a set of in this case Microsoft Azure in uh, instances which uh, platform updates are concurrently applied, virtual machine this we know, VNAT this is the virtual private network and this also is known that web role and worker role. So, these are some additional definitions which will be utilized for uh, service level uh, for SLA calculations right. So, uh, similarly as we have seen here in our example here if you can see the monthly uptime calculation and service level uh, for cloud services using those definitions the monthly available minutes is the total accumulated minutes during a billing period for all interface facing roles and two or more instances deployed in different update domain. Similarly, downtime is that how much time and uptime percentage is the maximum available minutes minus downtime by maximum available minutes like that we have calculated here right. So, that is the uh, um, thing and there are can be service script uh, credit rules as we have seen right 99.95 percent 10 this exactly the same type of values we have used. Similarly, this is for calculation and service level for crowd services similarly we can have for the VMs right. So, VMs uh, like I, I want to have uh, infrastructure as a service and the virtual machines are allocated similarly. So, maximum available minutes is the total accumulated time as billing period and so on and so forth dime time is similarly it is calculated and we can have similar and separate uh, same type of service credit. So, it can be at uh, what we mean to say it can be at different type of level, it can be at a IAS level, it can be as pass level or any uh, SAS level, I can have as a storage level of the, if there is storage downtime or accessibility problem and so on and so forth. So, this need to be clearly specified. Now, when we want to do this type of thing, so what are the different uh, best practices or rules we need to follow. Right? So, that we uh, let us see some of the best practices what uh, are, uh, are followed. So, the cloud standard custom council right provides cloud consumer with 7 steps they are they should take when the evaluating the SLS like it is also provided in their uh, document of April 2012 right. So, uh, identify the cloud actors. Who are the actors? According to NIST architecture, so these are the actors consumer, producer or the provider, carrier, broker and auditor. So, these are the 5 uh, actor which are uh, there as per NIST. So, we need to evaluate the business level policies 
right? this is important. What will be the data policies, SLA guarantee, list of services not covered under this, uh, excess uses, payment penalty, subcontract services, license software, industry specific standards and these are different aspects of the things. So, why, what will we are discussing about simple SLAs in actually the things are more complex like what should be the data uh, policies, how which are covered, which are not covered, uh, if there is a subcontract of services what should be that policies, Lice, whether you are using license software, so licensing mechanisms and so and so forth. right? Because most of the cases when we try to use this we may be using different license software and those licensing cost etc come into play not only then licensing period and so on uh, other things come into play. Then we need to understand that which level of operations we are looking at SAS, PaaS or IAS because the different type of uh, things uh, are diff, uh, uh, we uh, the different type of services have different type of requirement. In some cases SAS is much easier to control maybe or uh, measure. But uh, we need to look at that which type of services we are leveraging on, whether we are having multiple this sort of services. So, to you need to understand what SaaS, PaaS, IAS are about and which type of cloud it is running, whether it is a public, private or hybrid. Terms and condition in SLA depend on the complexity of control variables that are provide that the provider gives to the consumer or the uh, service consumers. So, now, consumer need to calculate that availability etc. For that the controlled control variables are provided by the uh, provider like I say it gives me the CPU uptime etc or uh, different uses time or hard uh, that disk uses uh, parameter. So, these are the different control parameters provided. Now, more uh, the complexity of this parameter depends on which level of operations you are doing and where you are running the things like it is IAS, PaaS or SaaS or whether it is a hybrid or uh, uh, your public or private. So, the other uh, things are one is that metric what we are discussing about to identify what metric should be used to achieve performance objectives. Right? Some examples of availability, right? uh, ability response metrics are like metric uh, name in the in SLA like availability and other type of things. There may be other constraints, method and frequency of collection of this data is also important. The aspect the, uh, the next aspect is the security like consider key security parameters for cloud including asset sensitivity, legal regulatory requirements like I, uh, the, uh, I may say that the data should reside within this particular geographical boundary or within this type of things. Cloud provider security capabilities, what is the capability of the cloud provider to provide that. Then we have service management requirement to need to identify the service management requirement. So, what should be monitored and reported for example, load performance, application performance or what should be metered right, what you want, uh, need to be built and metered. How rapid provisioning should be like speed testing demand uh, flexibility and how resource change should be managed right. So, how is the provisioning? what need to be monitored and reported and metered and type of things need to be looked into. And then prepare for or manage for the failure right that is another important exit. Determine what remedies should be provided uh, like for example, service credits and what are the liability limitations. So, how much service credit I need to provide and what are my liabilities from the provider, provider point of view and in order to that what the consumer are, are signing off how the disaster recovery plan will work when needed. So, how the disaster recovery plan will work when uh, it is needed and exit clause should be a part of every cloud SLA right in uh, either the consumer or the provider wants to terminate the relationship. So, SLA what it is there it is a agreement. So, what should be the exit clause suppose the consumer at some point of time to exit or the providers says that I am not able to provide the thing. So, that should be in the things. So, what we says that these are some of the essential best practices uh, or uh, some best practices we should keep in mind when formulating the SLA etc. Like identifying cloud actors, evaluate business level policies, understand this uh, type of services, what are the different metrics, security capability of the and requirement, security requirement of the consumer and the capability of the provider 
service management requirements and uh, how to manage failure or what should be the remedies for failure. So, what we tried this is a what we say an extension of the SLA already we have discussed. So, what we try to give that there are different aspects to the things and try to in this thing we try, we have also uh, seen two simple SLA related problem how it can be uh, how this type of SLAs are calculated though the problems are very simple and straightforward, but it gives us an idea that how you can appraise the approach this type of things. So, we will let us conclude here for this SLA tutorial. Thank you.